Right, I'm going to do a quick video on nested loops. So these are loops within a loop. So a nested loop is a loop within a loop. So what do I mean by a loop within a loop? So we know that we can do for i in range 0 to 7, which will be 7 iterations, print i plus 1. Okay, and this should give us one to seven, right? Okay, well, what if I wanted to put a for loop inside this for loop? Can I do it? Well, let's see. For i in range zero to three, I'm sorry, we'll put i2 actually, because otherwise I'm going to be confusing the variables. In range zero to three, print i2 plus 1 all right and now we're going to run this and just see what we get so what happens here is this first loop will run right and the first uh, iteration where index is 0 will run so i will be 0 and it should print out i plus 0 so within the first iteration of this first loop um, we should get a printout of 1, which is here. Now for i2 in range 0 to 3, now this is inside of this loop. So what happens is this loop here will execute three times for every iteration of this loop. Okay, so here it should print out 1 for i2, uh, 2 and then 3. And we see 1, 2 and 3 here. And then this will print out 2, and we'll once again get 1, 2, and 3 after that. And this process will keep repeating. So every time uh, one iteration of this loop um, is entered, or is executed, should I say, this entire this loop here will execute all three of its iterations. Okay, and so instead of looping just seven times, I mean, this for loop, this whole block of code executes seven times, but this for loop here, um, the for loop is actually executed uh, seven times, but the code in the for loop is executed 21 times. Okay, and we can actually prove this so. I'll just need a variable of some kind. Um, we'll call it num, okay? And we'll say num is equal to one, right? And we'll say for i in range <coughs> zero to seven, print this is iteration number whatever string of i plus one of the first loop okay and we'll say for i2 in range zero to three print This is iteration number da 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 plus str of num of the second loop. Okay, and then we'll make number equal to oops, not just that number equal to number bloody hell number plus one there we are right so let's execute this and see what happens shall we okay um i should probably put a couple of spaces in there so i'll just run some spaces and i'll do that again here we are so we get iteration number one of the first loop so iteration number one it actually starts okay there we are 
and then we get iteration number one of the second loop two of the second loop three of the second loop so the second loop at this point here has run three times within the first loop okay now the second iteration of the of the first loop uh, actually happens and we get iteration number four of the second loop number five of the second loop and number six it's actually number one number two and number three of the second loop and uh, the second loop has e executed for the second time uh, but really for this purpose we can say that the code in the second loop has been iterated over or has been executed this many times and you can actually see that the second loop is being run three times more than the first loop and this is because the second loop is within the first loop okay now just to demonstrate uh, this isn't just a four inclusive thing where you can only put four loops in you can put while loops in but I just want to kind of make uh, just some way of making the while loop uh, not run forever okay so we'll put for i in range um zero to ten shall we say print this is the first iteration of this is the whatever iteration the da, 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 da. this is iteration number da, 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 plus um str i plus one plus of the first loop okay and then we'll make a while loop and we'll say while I don't know. Um, while i times 10 is more than num1. Okay. So we'll say while i times 10. I will say while i plus 1 times 10 is more than num1 execute code uh, print Uh, I'm just trying to think what is the number I'm using. It's actually going to be num1. So str num1. In the second loop. And then num1 equals num1 plus 1. This might not work out the way that I want it to. Um, not sure why that's giving me an error. Ah, I am sure why that's giving. It's because I haven't put a plus there. That's fine. Uh, let's just see what happens. I could have got all this code. To, no, I've got this code correct. That's great. It's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. So, this runs 10 times, and then this should run more or less 10 times. Okay? So, the main reason why I put a while loop inside of a for loop is to show you that you can put any kind of loop within any other kind of loop. So it's not just that we can put for loops in for loops and while loops in a while loop. We could put a for loop in a while loop, uh, a while loop in a for loop, a for loop inside of a while loop that's inside of a for loop. You can actually put loops within loops within loops. Um, it doesn't just have to be one loop within a loop, which I'll go for that afterwards. So anyway i'll go over what this code does so here you can see the printout and it says this is iteration number one of the first loop so this is the we're saying this is the first time we've executed the first loop okay and then we're saying this is execution number one 
of the code in the second loop and it should execute nine times here nine times okay it should execute nine times the reason why it only executes nine times and not ten times um, is actually because here num1 is equal to one so on the first uh, bunch of code it should execute nine times on the first um, entering of the while uh, loop but after that it should execute ten times so executes nine times and each time num becomes more than one i in this instance or i plus one in this instance is going to be one and that times ten is going to be ten so once num one becomes ten this this uh, condition here that the while loop asks for is no longer true num 10 is now equal uh, num 1 is now equal to 10 and therefore this is not greater than num 1 so once we get here to where it prints out 9 it prints out 9 and then it adds 1 to this 9 and it becomes 10 and this can't execute okay so that's what happens after that it goes to 10 and then each bunch here will execute 10 times and it will just keep on going so you can basically see and you can follow uh, how 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 the loops work how uh, the executions work that kind of thing yeah and that's that so it just shows you uh, that you can put a while loop within a for loop and uh, it also shows you that a loop inside of a loop is a timesing of the amount of uh, loops of each is the amount of executions you'll have so for example this here will execute 21 times because it's going to execute three times for every single iteration there are seven iterations so it will execute 21 times um this actually executes 99 times even though you might think it should execute 100 times uh, because it's a while loop and because of the number we started with for num1 okay now another thing i'll show you very quickly is that you can put more than one loop within a loop so a nested loop can be nested once twice it could be nested hundreds of times so we'll say for i in range 0 to 10 print The string of, or oh, we'll just print. This is iteration number, blah blah blah, and we'll put the number str of i plus one of the first loop. And we'll put for i in, or for i2 in range. I'm not exactly sure why that's doing that. For i2 in range 0 to 10, we'll put print. Well, I'm actually going to put a couple of uh, variables here to keep counter. So count 1 equals 1 count two equals two it equals one sorry uh, print this is the this is execution number str count one Of the second loop and for I free in range 0 to 10 print this is execution oops I need to actually uh, <laughs> count there so count 1 equals count one plus one this will make sense when you come to analyze it ok 
count two of the third loop. Okay, so essentially every time this iterates, it'll print, you know, an extra number. Now I need these count variables here uh, just so that we can count the amount of times this is executed. If, if I print simply i2 plus 1, i2 will reset every time this resets. So it would just continuously, it would print out uh, 1 to 10, 10 times, one time for each loop here. And this would print out uh, 1 to 10, 10 times for each of these loops. But what I want to actually show is not what iteration number this is of the second loop uh, for the first iteration of the first for the iteration of the first loop i want to see how many times i want to show how many times this code has been executed and that is why we need a count okay and count two will have to equal count two plus one i should be able to execute this without any problems let's see if it works and this has worked as planned i do need to add a couple of spaces here And you can see just how many times each loop has executed. So execution 92 of the second loop, the 92nd time that this has been executed, this for loop, this is executed for the 900th and 11th time, 912, 913th. And that's because every time this for loop uh, executes, the for loop underneath, underneath, underneath it is executed 10 times, okay? Now, because this for loop contains another for loop, this is executed 10 times every time this is executed, okay? So, the first time this is executed, this is executed 10 times uh, because it's 10 times 1. And this is executed 100 times because it's 100 times 1, okay? Crazy, I know. Crazy, I know. So this gets executed a thousand times, this a hundred times, and this ten times. Okay, and this is what we are calling a, an exponential uh, raise in executions. Okay, that's more or less it, really. Just bear in mind that the more you put loops within loops, the more complicated and more costly, uh, and the longer it'll take for your code or for your function or whatever it is that you're trying to do to execute you know the harder it'll be to execute the more power it'll require the more cpu it'll require all of that kind of good stuff and yeah just to add in a loop into a loop you know you multiply the uh, second loop the amount of executions in the second loop by the first one and every time you add what add a loop you're consecutively uh, multiplying over and over again so you're multiplying each uh, total number of iterations for each loop by the next loops uh, total number of iterations and that's how you can calculate how many times any loops uh, code will be executed okay uh, and the other thing is really just showing you how to make these four loops uh, these nested loops all you've got to do is yeah literally just put whatever loop inside of itself but the main thing to watch out for is just the fact that every time you put a loop inside of a loop, you're magnifying the amount of times the second loop or the third loop or each consecutive loop actually uh, executes the code in itself. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it made sense. Thanks for watching.